I'm Dan Gulush and welcome to another edition of Dan's Fishing Tales. Today we're going to be fishing a bait called Fatty Z. Now a while back I showed you a real quick, uh, in fact it was one of these shorts, these videos that we do, and showed you how to rig it on a copperhead hook and why. Well, that's what we're going to be using today. Uh, already I've been at one lake, and I'll show you some photos here of some of the fish that I've got. I'm with Don Banning, and uh, these are lakes that Don's got some permission on, and this one's a different one. We've never done an episode here. Uh, but uh, I was going to show you how you actually rig this thing, because in that short video, I didn't have much time to really show you. What we're going to be doing is using the longer rod, and maybe later on, just for the heck of it, I'll use the B&M short one that they have. It's actually a crappie thing, but it's got enough backbone you can use these. Now, we're fishing a lot of weed areas, and I'll swing this in here. There we go. There it is right there. This is the Fatty Z, and there's a couple of them, and I'll show you both of them here. I'll put this over here. We're in a wooded area, as you can probably tell. Now, there's the Fatty Z, like I just showed you there. That's this one. And then this is the Maga Fatty Z, and it's seven and a quarter inches long. It's much bigger. I don't know if we'll use this today, uh, because I've been doing very, very well with the five inch. But now I'm going to show you how I rig this. And with this Elastex, it's very tough to do it. But once you do, it usually holds. And we'll get that in here, get it out of the woods. And I'll show you how to, I rig this now. Okay, it's already skin hooked, and you can probably see that right here. And the skin hook with this Elastex is just something different. You don't have to really get it in all that much. Well, I'm going to take it out, cause I'm, and you can see how tough it is. You can't in there, pop loose. All right, now the spring up here, and then get that moss. You can tell I've been fishing in the moss area. This spring, you rotate it. Now I'm going to do it in reverse because I'm going to take this off to show you. And uh, I'll show you after you get it off. There it is. Now to get it back on, this can be tough, especially with a new one. You see how I'm indenting that? I mean you really have to on this Elastex to get it to go because it won't hold real good. Now this one fortunately already has a hole in it. And I was able to hit it. You can tell you got to screw it. You just keep screwing this thing on. You want to get it all the way up there. And, uh, and then with the Fatty Z, it's got a slot. See the slot down there? That's where we're going to put the hook. So you want them rotated enough that you can do that. There we go. Yep, just one. And you can, this, this elastic stuff to do. Now, you got that slot. You put the hook in there like that. Now, push this forward break it out. You can see the point right there. Okay, now once it's out of there, then just push this forward, and it doesn't take much with this. Once you get it in, it's tough. There it is. Now, it's all weedless. So we're going to take that down there, and we're going to throw that in, see if we get a fish to hit it. We're going to fish some of this slob here first. I may go up there in that creek arm, but uh, let's make a couple of casts here first. I moved up to the creek arm, but it uh, didn't take, stay there long. But I wanted to show you, here's what I was talking about on that screw head. This is still holding, but it will come out more, because I, I got caught in a tree at one point at another lake. But that shows you how long this thing's lasted. I don't know how many fish I've caught. But here's the reason I don't use a regular hook, that I use this copperhead thing. It wears a hole in here. And I told you this in that short that I was telling you about. And it will slide up and down. You just can't keep it put. If there was barbs on this part of the hook, yeah, he might be able to. So instead we screw this in like this and it stays much longer, lasts a long time. And of course with this Elastex that the Z-Man has, you know what that's like. Well, Don and I have changed locations again. Uh, went back to the other lake we were at. Uh, there's more weeds, there's no doubt about that, which you can probably see. The water's a little clearer, and it just seems like they were doing so good on these that, uh, well, we decided to come back anyway. Make cast out here. 
see if maybe something will hit it about in that. There's a little pocket right there that's open. Not too many open if you can see that water. And uh, anyway, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it a try here. Got a spot right behind us here. See what it'll. I mean, it's thick. The grass is just absolutely thick there, and I want this to drop, and it can't in that. And I wouldn't even want to mention the butt dragger earlier. Uh, I would not want to put one on unless I had a little bit more open water here because of the type of stuff I've got. Um, it just wouldn't go through right. That's all there is to it. I do have some good looking spots behind here. Um, there, there's one right there. There we go. Got one. Got him right behind. He's not a real big one, but he's fish. There we go. As you can tell, he's not big, but he's fish. And he was right in the area I told you about that was uh, between, the, uh, between the shore and the weeds. Um, there's a lot of them that have been laying in there like that. And the head came loose again, as I told you about. I'm glad we did that. Small fish, but uh, see the head came loose. So now what I gotta do, and this part did not, it's still stuck in. Now if this had been an ordinary worm, it's a good chance that thing would have flown off of there. But because of that elastex, it stayed on. I mean, it's really on there, as you can tell. I can't even hardly get that out of there, but I gotta get it out in order to screw that back on. There we do. So now I'll screw the head okay. back on. I've got it uh, screwed back on. And we're going to try to cast right about in that same area. Now uh, I'm just off. I'm over here out of the weeds on the outside. So we'll see if something busts through there. I really don't think they will. Because right now the secret is to stay right within somewhere where you've got Really, if you got two weed lines, just like that last one I caught, uh, that just seems like the ideal deal. And in fact, we're going to go probably over our back, I should say, into this shallow arm and uh, find a spot like that. There, I got one right now. There we go. Oop. Lost him. Same sort of spot, and again, he. This head's getting, I mean, I should say the worm is starting to get bad, so I'm going to try to find a different spot on it, because there is, it's good and thick. And if nothing else, I might just cut one part of that off and then screw it in. So I'm going to mess around with that, and then we're going to be All right, i got it screwed back on again, and we're going to probably make another cast in that same spot. But what I wanted to bring up is, because of this elastex, it's so tough to get that thing started. If it doesn't have a real sharp point on that spring head, you might take like a very, very small nail or tack and push it in there and make just a slight hole. If you can find that hole again to start that, it'll help a lot because this elastex is really tough stuff and it's hard to do something like that. And we're going to put that in there again. Uh, not really where I wanted to be. I'm just about two inches to the left of where I wanted to go. So I'm going to bring that in. I got a piece of land right here in front of me because I've got a point that juts out in behind you. And uh, that's one of the spots that I catch fish or I have before in here. Don't like that fast either. I'm just not hitting where those fish are at. That's why we're gonna move down here because I think there's some pretty decent sizes there. I got right, yeah. Had one hit that. There we go, got one. Okay. Sorry about that. I had to step around you. There it is right there. A little bit better fish than that last one we had. And uh, again, you can see the head. I want to leave that like that. You can see that head and that spring, that fish flipping around there, um, took that head, or I should say took the spring part and pulled it right out. And uh, I got to get it. But it does, with this though, here's another thing about this. This hooks them usually right in the mouth. They don't swallow them deep, which is good. Uh, to swallow them deep, they got to really, really 
engulf the thing and I haven't had that a lot using the copperhead system It'd come out just like that but see it's a little bit better fish nothing really big we're gonna go up here though where I think there might be some even bigger ones I got it screwed on again um, we're gonna try it down here I think you can see this it, in fact I think there's one right up here in that area right by a little brush pile right now I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll try to get out of your way. There's a little brushy area there. This is extremely shallow up here, so it's going to be interesting to see, but I've been seeing quite a bit of movement. In fact, I've just seen some movement right here close to shore. Here's something I want to bring up. Where I skin hooked that, we're using the Daiichi bleeding bait, of course. See the red? So you got a flash of red there as well. That just that little flash of red, I, I just have a feeling that helps a lot. I'm going to let it really sink down there and see what we got. I can see, I can actually see that red flash, that hook. Whoa, here we go. You can hear it. I thought it was after mine. I'm going to get a little closer to shore. I'm going to move around here a little bit and cast over into those, that other brush. There we go. Oh! Now that was a good fish. As you can see, that one broke me off. The line came right back at you. So now, we got to go get another hook because I didn't bother bringing any down here. And uh, that was a big fish. I tied another one on, but I decided to rig it with the mag fatty Z. I'm gonna hit you yet with this thing, aren't I? There, see it's the big one. Different color too. So we're gonna see if, since there's some in there that big, to break me off. That was a good fish. Uh, let's see what we can do with this big one. go right in that brush as you can see now he's in a weed by golly he got it so that mag fatty z works too as you can see Got plenty of moss on it. Uh, but again, I was telling you about how they get hooked in the mouth with this, with this rig like this. And that's what it did right there. Ready to release. Now that's not too bad a size fish. And the head's still screwed in. So that works. Don's yelling at me about something down there. He didn't think I'd get it on this uh, mag fatty Z. He said, I'll be surprised. Well, we got it, didn't we? Yep. And boy, I got plenty of this stuff. So, <clears throat> there we go. Got it off. Now, let's try that again, because I think there's a few fish back here in this, way back in this arm like this. And you can see how that went down, just like I told you. Now, this one will really stretch, because definitely the Elastex and here's and I want to show you this because this is a new worm it's a little bit tougher to get slid down because of the Elastex and now you just skin hook that right in like that it's not right 
it's hard to get it skin hooked because of the elastics, but once you do, it is. It doesn't take much of a hair trigger. So let's see what else we can get back here. Love to tag that big one again. Not that doubtful if that'll happen. thought I seen one come out of there. So they're definitely back way way back in this trick arm. There we are. Again on the mag fatty Z. And again, as I'm gonna show you, caught right there right in the mouth because of this copperhead the way it is and there it is right there decent fish glad we came back here here's something i want to show you on the mag as opposed to the regular fatty z fatty z i showed you where that slot was in the bottom there is no slot in this one uh, get that skin hooked again maybe eh, still not i may have to completely redo that there we go the reason I did is it kind of offset it it must have skin hooked itself or something I don't know what it did you gotta bust that through this this elastics on these z-man are just something else I mean yeah it's, it makes it super in a lot of ways you have to do a little bit more work like you see on that but it pays off the Mag Fatty Z has definitely got a faster fall rate and uh, I think what I've done is I've probably just about worn out my welcome on this end. It doesn't seem like the fish are in there quite as much. I, of course I tagged that big one and that right there was... I'm surprised I got any after that because I tore the thing up pretty good and he was there with that in his mouth. And, uh, Still trying it, Meg. You know, I might have to go back to the little. I'm not sure. There's a ledge out there on this lake that uh, fish have a tendency to hang around. Mainly I find them early spring or later in the fall in that spot. But the stuff like you see here, it's not quite as heavy. But it's out around there too, so I thought, eh, maybe there's a few move back to that area. That's where I'm casting right now, at least that direction. It just doesn't seem like that much activity in the stuff that's out a lot further. As I'm going to some spots that normally would have something. At least not, or at least it does when there's all these weeds and moss are not in there. They just, uh, I only had that one, which uh, you may have seen, that uh, came up and I didn't catch him that he came up to the surface when I was just reeling it back in and he blasted that thing. But he didn't get it. Keith Lundahl, who used to own Lundahl Lures, would probably say he was practicing. <laughs> of course, he made the Pops Topwater Spoon, which is a famous topwater spoon, and um, he'd get that all the time. He says, I really feel that there are times when the fish are just practicing. Maybe he's right, I don't know. What do you say we go back to where we were? I really think that maybe uh, we kind of want our welcome 
back in here because if you notice we're not getting any hits at all so we'll just walk down along here and see what we can find I'm gonna fish down this line where we were. So, see if something comes out of there. Yep, sure enough, there we go, first cast, we got one. Well, that didn't take long, did it? We gotta get him out of those weeds. He's not as big as some of those, I don't think. I'm not gonna say it. He didn't look all that bad. He just got as much as some doggone many weeds and moss on him. There we go. Yeah. Now he got it all. Now he's gonna fight. <laughs> Swing him in here. There we go. Oop, snapped off. I think I got problems a lot. And that last one there that uh, just broke as I got him in here. Uh, tied the line again. I was gonna tell you what I'm using is a trialene knot where you go through twice it's got double cushion line um, but this time I do what I called an improved trialene knot which is where the line goes back in rather than the way they do it where they just go with the two wraps and then four and then you come back through the double loops uh, this time I did that plus I took it and uh, put it back through like you would a clinch knot an improved clinch knot and tighten it down that way so let's see if it might be the knot because i think the big one that i lost earlier was also lost on the knot so yeah, we'll see i get my knife put away here and i'll cast over here again same location see if there might be something there I've pulled what three fish out of there maybe so far i'm going right between there's some tall grass, real tall grass there. And uh, I'm going between where that is on the shore and also the, the moss and the weeds. Um, but if I get this way from it, no, nope, don't get a hit. And right now I'm that way from it. So I'm going to bring that back across here. And we're going to go up by that. I'm going to cast right up by that grass again. And I'll turn you around here to see it. You'll see Dawn down there too. see what we can do here casting right over the top of it. that's where I've been casting right there where you can see not that exact spot necessarily but that sort of an area where I'm fishing between well that's what I wanted to show you anyway today was you seen how we were catching the fish and that and the, the uh, fatty Z and also the mag fatty Z but the copperhead hook and as to how I used it and we didn't do too bad I mean uh, we caught a few fish and I think Don and I'm gonna keep fishing for a little bit but don't want to keep you around anymore we're going to be doing some more of this and i'm going to show you how you can make up a copperhead hook because you can no longer find them i mean if you do fine go ahead and buy them they're daiichi copperheads so uh you know they're, they're just discontinued but you are going to be able to make your own i'm going to show you how to do that in another video so until next time get out of the water and enjoy a great day of fishing